do you do if you're a company that specialises in making small versions of big cars, but you get so flipping good at it that you find yourself in need of a new, more difficult creative challenge? Well, naturally, you start making big versions of small cars, like that. That is the new Tamiya Wild One Max. It is a fully drivable, road-legal version of this iconic 80s remote control car. And this is the Fully Charged Show. The Fully Charged Show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's Fully Charged Live Canada. Get your tickets today. Welcome to the latest endeavour of the Little Car Company. You know, there are certain brands who, when they email me, inviting me to come and have a look at their new thing, I just reply yes before I've even finished reading the email. And ever since I had a go in their electric micro Ferrari not long ago, the Little Car Company have sat at the very top of that list. And up until now, that's what they've been up to. They've been making roughly three quarter scale models of legendary Bugatti, Ferrari and Aston Martin racing cars and supercars. This, this is something a little bit different. A full sized two seater road legal version of an iconic 80s RC car. I mean, I'm told it's iconic. I wouldn't know because I'm so bloody young. And this project, just like every other little car company project, it's all about two things. Number one, being painstakingly faithful to the original. And you'll see some examples of that in a moment. And number two, just having fun. And actually, I think the best example of that that I can show you is the sticker sheet. Stay there, Chris. Actually, you might need to get back a bit for this. Uh, yeah. This is the sticker sheet. Now you can order your Tamiya Wild One Max pre-stickered, or you can have it delivered with one of these and uh, apply them yourself, you know, like you did when you were six. So let's just have a little mosey around this thing, pick out a few details. We'll start with the size. It's about 3.6 meters by 1.9 meters. So a short, squat, but wide vehicle. Really interesting driving experience that's gonna make for. Um, a couple of details that the eagle-eyed Tamiya enthusiast may notice are ever so slightly different to the original RC car, other than the fact that it's bigger, obviously, um, that they've had to make to accommodate road legality are as follows. The body, you'll notice, is a little bit wider relative to the wheelbase on the big one. That's to fit two people in. And then suspension components are a little bit more angled, a little bit more covered, because there are unfortunately rules that say you can't have big pointy bits of metal protruding from your vehicle if you want to drive it on the road. Political correctness gone too far, if you ask me. <laughs> And let's talk about that suspension, because this is proper stuff. The little car company don't mess around when it comes to driving dynamics on their cars. I learned that very quickly when I drove their little Testarossa J, which actually flies around a racetrack. As such, this Tamiya is going to be capable off-road, and that's enabled by these 10-way adjustable Bilstein dampers, these IVAC springs, that's proper, proper off-roading kit. And you'll notice as we work our way along, pretty high ground clearance, nice short overhangs both front and back to ensure that you don't scrape your bottom going off a ramp or jump. No one likes to scrape their bottom. More off-roady kit back here, have a look at these knobbly tires. That, my friend, is a Maxus Bighorn, yeah not interested in Pirelli P0s. I want big horns on my off-roading vehicle. That's a proper tire. Not gonna be the most relaxing ride uh, on tarmac, but extremely capable when you get into the muddy stuff. And just look at this. This is the kind of thing that these guys do best, the little details. We've got these little pins here, which pull out to, uh, that gets you into the jet washer fluid, etc. But then there's also a really big one here. Look at that, that is, that is just so satisfying. There's nothing under there. There's no need for that at all, but they've done it just because. Back here, batteries and motors. Swappable batteries, as with the little Testarossa J. In fact, the exact same battery packs. They look like this, 1.8 kilowatt hours. This can take up to eight of them for 
14.4 kilowatt hours. I really like the fact that they've not over batteried it, made it overweight, because that would be a real shame. 14.4 kilowatt hours is enough for between 100 and 200 kilometers of range, depending on if you're off-road or on-road, the little car company reckons, which is, let's be honest, probably plenty for a vehicle like this. Power comes from this motor. It's sent to the rear wheels only, and it's worth about 38 brake horsepower, which may not sound like a huge amount, but the thing is this whole car only weighs about 500 kilos. I can tell you, actually, I've seen the prototype being hooned around the track at Bista by the CEO of Ben, and I can confirm it goes. Also, can we just talk about these? I have an issue with fake grills on EVs, but stick on vents, I'm okay with those because they're authentic. The RC car had those as well. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to get in now. It's going to take a while and it's not going to be especially dignified. So while I'm doing that, let me tell you about the road legality of this vehicle, because this is the first car that these guys have made that is actually allowed to go on the road. And I'm so glad they've done that because their previous creations are so exquisite that they deserve to be used more than just on people's private airfields or wherever on earth they're being used currently. This is actually going to be an L7E category quadricycle, which is the same category as Microlino, the City Transformer, the Carver. I'm seriously considering doing a twin test with this and the Microlino next year. The, the twin test absolutely no one asked for. Of course, there will need to be some modifications made to make this vehicle road legal, and that's where the optional road legal pack, hang on, comes in. And that'll come with a few things that you can see on this car, like uh, number plates, windscreen, windscreen wipers, and then uh, a few things this one doesn't have, like uh, wheel covers, so that you don't take the skin off a cyclist's leg with your big horns, and uh, headlights with indicators and mirrors, you know. Useful stuff like that. Oh, I'm out of breath. So, interior of the Tamiya Wild One Max, what have we got? Well, obviously the RC car didn't really have an interior, so this is an opportunity for these guys to really get imaginative, and they haven't disappointed. We've got a removable Sparco steering wheel. I think that's just to help you get in and out easier, but they are considering uh, whether or not they're going to go for this for production because, well, people might steal it when you're parked outside the shop. It does have a steering wheel, it's not remote control, in case you hadn't figured that out by now, that would be incredibly dangerous. What else? We've got these super deep Cobra bucket seats, these really hug you in, and you're going to be grateful of all that bolstering when you're sending it over a sand dune sideways, no doubt. Lovely carbon fibre finish dash on these 100 launch edition cars with a plaque to tell you which of the 100 you've got. Can we just talk about the fact that they're making 100 launch edition cars? It speaks to the fact that these guys have had a lot of interest in this project. This is no one-off plaything. They're going to build a fair few of these. And actually, just a small Easter egg I think I might have picked up on in the press release. It says something about how the initial 100 cars will be delivered to customers fully built, which sort of suggests there may be some subsequent build-your-own kits coming. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Dials. These are beautiful. Again, the RC car didn't have a gauge cluster, so they've started from scratch here. They've imagined what that would look like, and that is just perfect to me. Everything from the colours to the font. It's so satisfying to see that it fits the rest of the car so beautifully. Likewise, I love that everything that you control is done through these really lovely, rubbery, rugged, uh, marine grade switches, super waterproof. You could wipe them down with a wet cloth if they get muddy. Everything from your indicators to your forward, backward, neutral, to your horn, powered by these lovely squashy buttons. It is fabulous in here. So, price. How much does all of this retro magnificence set you back? Well, a lot less than the little electric Ferrari that these guys made. That was 100 grand. This is 35 plus VAT. And included in that price is a brand new remote control Tamiya Wild one, which they've recommissioned just for this special project. And look, I don't have 35 grand lying around for a toy, nor do I get the nostalgia hit from this vehicle, because again, dead young. 
And by the way, if this video has filled you with nostalgia, this is your reminder to get your prostate checked. But even in spite of all of that, I'm just so glad that this thing exists. It's just fun for fun's sake. And we need more of that in the electric future. And if you want to see a bit more fun, check out this video with the little car company's Ferrari Testarossa J. Bye.